We are, we are a country of vast resources and great creativity. And of this, I'm extremely proud. Um, Anal Mazzoni, just want to check if you have now completed your law degree. As it, initially, you said you had, but it turned out that you actually hadn't. So Thank I just you, want Honorable to Member. understand now if you have now actually gone to school and you now have a law degree. Honorable Member, in the year 1996, I matriculated from the Glen High School. I have not completed a law degree, neither have I ever said that I've completed a law degree. I am, however, now in my fourth term of parliament. And please believe me when I tell you, I am a master in manners and you would do very well. Guys, this is another really intense confrontation between Honorable Matsone and the EFF. I actually was really surprised to see Honorable Matsone once more. I actually thought probably she had been fired from the DA because I didn't really see her, you know, during the campaign trails and, you know, during that period prior to the elections. And I remember when she was the chief whip of the DA, she used to be called the Rottweiler. So in this video, she's really barking really hard at the EFF following what I think was a really excellent speech on innovation and education in South Africa and then she was thrown a really interesting question on the question of her matric and her degrees. Watch to the end to really understand the perspective of both Honorable Matsone and the EFF. The next speaker is the Honorable Matsone. Matsone. House Chairperson Horn, Minister Nzimandi, fellow members of parliament. Science, technology, and innovation are now commonly accepted to be the cornerstones of the majority of the world's economy. They are dominant forces, both in modern society and in the international economic development sphere. If this area is strengthened the way it should be, the results will encourage an open, transparent system of government throughout the world. In fact, so important is this field that the African Union Science and Technology Innovation Strategy for Africa 2024, named On the Wings of Innovation, places science, technology and innovation at the epicenter of Africa's social, economic development and growth. Human capital is absolutely essential to the development of a national system of innovation that is globally competitive and responsive to the South African developmental needs. This department must ensure that it provides support through the granting of bursaries, scholarships, sponsoring internships, and funding emerging and established researchers. South Africa is a nation of great innovators, from our world famous creepy crawly pool cleaner, Prattly Putty, which just for your information is the only South African substance on the moon, to being the advanced surgical country that we are, including being the country to conduct the first successful human transplant, to the country emerging as a leader in solar power and renewable energy innovation. Technologies such as artificial intelligence, robotics, big data analytics, and quantum computing now have the potential to completely change how we operate the economy and South Africa's research and innovation in these fields that could play an instrumental role in the growth of our nations. We must prepare ourselves and our workplaces for the fundamental changes and challenges these technologies will bring them. Minister, we must never find ourselves blindsided by a further lack of employment due to a lack of knowledge as to how technology operates and how best to use it to our abilities and to improve our workforce. We must be acutely aware of the possible misuse of emerging technologies. Now, while AI has the ability to change and improve the way we work, we must also ensure that there are regulations in place to ensure that there is not an abuse of these technologies, that academic progress is not compromised due to such abuse. Children must still enjoy a comprehensive, comprehensive education, and we must never become dependent on AI to take over the human mind and the capacity for understanding, innovation, creation, imagination, and most importantly, cultural knowledge.
Innovation results in productivity growth that brings vast benefits to the large entirety of our country. As productivity rises, so will wages and businesses will become more profitable. This will enable them to invest more and to hire more employees. The full benefit of innovation can be re realized and it will be necessary to spread it across the economy to equally benefit companies in different sectors and different sizes. Experts call this process diffusion of innovation. These are various measures to promote innovation, including increasing spending on research and development, known as R&D, and investing in education, as well as enabling startup businesses. Companies can facilitate innovation by investing in their staff and conducting their own R&D. It is said that if you give a man a fish, you feed him for a day. If you teach a man to fish, you'll feed him for a lifetime. That's how the saying goes. We must not be afraid to encourage the sharing of information and knowledge by encouraging more entrepreneurship programs, encouraging our young people to learn skills that they can develop over time, no matter how advanced technology becomes, the world will always require artisans and artisanal skills are becoming increasingly rare. We now admire work done by artisans and we need minister to find that balance between large scale production and artisanal excellence. There are some things that you can only learn on the job. Young people should be excited about these opportunities. And certainly when it comes to small and medium enterprises, this is a sure way to grow entities and promote growth and profitability. Minister, never before have the prospects been greater. The potential, more accessible, and the need for the urgent advancements in the field of science, technology, and innovation greater. We are, we are a country of vast resources, and great creativity, and of this, I'm extremely proud. Let us work together to advance this field, to grow our economy, and most importantly, to Honourable empower member, our people. I thank you. Honor well, Honourable Member, please just take your seat for a moment. Oh, where you're done. Honourable Mahotwe, why yeah. are you rising? No, thank you, Chair. I just wanted to find out if the speaker on the podium can take a question on whether she has now completed her degree on law, or no, uh, honourable member, person. you know the rules very well. You first inquire whether the member is prepared to take a question, and then you pose the question. Honourable Mazzone, uh, are you prepared to take a question? Absolutely. Thank you, House Chairperson Horn. Honourable Mahotwe, will you re now phrase your question? Um, honourable Mazzone, just want to check if you have now completed your law degree. As it Initially, you said you had, but it turned out that you actually hadn't. So Thank I just you, Honourable Member. I understand now if you have now actually gone to school and you now have a law degree. Honourable Member, in the year 1996, I matriculated from the Glen High School. I have not completed a law degree, neither have I ever said that I've completed a law degree. I am, however, now in my fourth term of Parliament. And please believe me when I tell you, I am a master in manners, and you would do very well to learn a little bit from me. Thank you so much for the question. Thank you. Thank you. The Honourable Order. Yeah, interesting confrontation. What do you think? I think probably this is the strategy the EFF actually has now resorted to, to try to really... I don't know anyway. Uh, many people actually think that this was an honest question, though, but... Um, uh, Honorable Matson, I didn't really take it lightly. Uh, coming from the perspective of her mannerisms, she, I remember she during the previous uh, parliamentary debate, she was really, uh, you know, she really went off the hook when she tried to blast the AMC and you know President Ramaphosa and many policies of the AMC. And to have that really come back to her, I think she really <laughs> responded in a really funny, really interesting characteristic in the way of um, what she would always call a Rottweiler. But this issue of um, the degrees um, of, of the DA members, actually, for me, I think it's becoming something that maybe we might want to talk about or open um, the can to really try to investigate and understand. Uh, if maybe 
many of the members of the DA do not have uh, probably a bachelor's degrees or master's degrees or I really don't know how um, how it goes in the DA but um, it appears that you know she actually just spoke about here that she had a matriculated from a high school and if that matriculant uh, degree is what actually has kept her in the parliament for this while for four sessions of the parliament um, I think it's quite something to maybe think about maybe she might want to consider uh, maybe taking a few degrees or if probably um, the parliament actually or the DA party actually sees it um, as okay to really proceed as long as one is creative I know that anyway policy making uh, policy making actually requires a certain level of intelligence that might be uh, not necessarily uh, require a certain degree of ed uh, educational prowess in terms of having the degrees, but one can actually be educated uh, in understanding the problems of a nation without the actual degree per se. And so probably this is the strategy of the DA in terms of the fact that they are problem oriented and trying to solve problems. And so degrees do not really matter. And, uh, you know, unlike the EFF, the EFF actually proud on, on the degrees of their members. I think Flo Chivambu is already uh, having a PhD at the moment and uh, Commissioner Lozzi. And I think many of the members of the EFF also have master's degrees. And so probably this might be a, a basis of contention, uh, you know, as we proceed with this fifth, seventh parliament in South Africa between the EFF and the DA. But anyway, what do you guys think about um, Honorable Matson's speech here? I really enjoyed it so much. Share your thoughts in the comments.